Hello and welcome everyone. We'll get started in just a moment here. Just want to give people a chance to get their audio preferences settled. All right, and that looks like a pretty good critical mass. And I'll make sure that I type this out once I'm through, just so anybody joining a little bit later has the same information. But welcome to our webinar today. Uh, before we get started, I'd just like to cover a few technical details. As you probably noticed, your cameras and microphones are disabled by default on this platform. Uh, so if you do have any questions or if you want to interact with each other or the presenters uh, via discussion, uh, your primary ways of doing that are going to be through the chat and the Q&A buttons. If you use chat, just make sure that you select everyone if you want everyone to see your message. Otherwise, only the hosts and panelists will see it. Uh, we do prefer if you have questions for the panel that you use the Q&A function just because it's easier to manage if we have a lot of questions coming through. Uh, those can be asked anonymously and you can view existing questions as well as, as uploading them. Uh, and then uh, just as a side note, we are recording this webinar and it will be available about 30 minutes after the conclusion using the same link that you used to join this live session. So once again, thanks for joining us for today's uh, session, You Achieve Planning and Audit, the Trusted Pathway to Graduation brought to you in partnership with College Source. The YouTube Planner allows students and advisors to create personalized term pathways that interactively validate with the YouTube audit, visibly checking off requirements to graduation and illustrating progress toward a degree. This combination of guidance backed by the most flexible audit system in the industry is why YouTube currently serves over 2.7 million students throughout North America and Asia. Regardless of size, educational niche, student information system and system mandates. To tell you a little bit more about this system, uh, and how to use it and all the benefits that it has. I'd like to hand it off to our presenter for the day, Chris Starkey, a UHE Customer Engagement and Training Specialist with College Source. Chris? Thanks, Mike. Well, welcome everybody. And thank you to ACRA for setting up this session, which will be providing the best pathway to graduation for your students. Um, I am Chris Starkey. I've been with College Source for 15 years now. My background is in technical communication um, and I have this very long title, which I'll show in just a minute, that basically means I am responsible for training the U Achieve software and um, for conducting demos like this for audiences like you. So welcome. I also have with me today, Ed Julis. Hi, good afternoon, everybody, or good morning, depending on what time zone you may be in. Um, I'm similar to Chris. I've been here quite a while. I think it's about 13 years now. I've been involved in every facet of implementing our software other than the actual programming of it. My expertise is more on the technical and implementation side of what we do, whereas Chris is more functional. So I'll be keeping an eye on a chat window. And, and if you do have some technical questions along the way, happy to answer those. And as she said, we appreciate the opportunity today. Thank you for that. That's great. All right, so I do, we're gonna start out with a few slides today and um, to give you an overview. And then uh, we're going to flow into a live demo. Um, while I am presenting, I'm actually gonna turn off my camera because it's a little distracting to me, but hopefully, um, Ed, if you can help me, you do see my um, slide. Yes. Okay, excellent. So let me, well, maybe I won't turn off my camera. All right, I'm not seeing the controls for that. So we'll just go ahead and I'll just ignore myself. All right, so today we are gonna be specifically talking about um, You Achieve Cloud and it is the hosted You Achieve academic planning system. And so the You Achieve suite of products includes academic planning, schedule building, degree audit, that includes transfer articulation, uh, batch audits and we have a comments and notifications platform, as well as a report library. Now, today we're really gonna be focusing in on our planner, and that's what helps your students move towards degree and graduate most effectively. The key 
though it to it is our sophisticated audit engine behind it that supports the most accurate and simple to very sophisticated curriculum for keeping students on track. Now, if you stick to us until the end, we'll also have a little sneak peek into what's on the roadmap for our next version of the planner. We've got some very exciting developments and that'll take you to the next level of your student planning. <clears throat> but before we dive into the application itself, I wanna say a few words about College Source. So we're 50 years old and we've been in business since 1971 where we started putting college catalogs on microfiche and over the years, developed into um, the company that we are today, supporting multiple software products, but all of them focused only on higher education. All of our products support and help students graduate on time, as well as helping advisors and administrators with guidance tools. We don't do any business in any other arena. We are, we work with all student information systems, including homegrown, and we don't own any, so our applications are flexible and not reliant on any specific system. We are privately owned and funded, consistent growth under our own management. We're very stable and we're not going anywhere. Similarly, most of our staff have over 12 years with the company. The majority are functional from colleges and universities. They've been advisors, transfer specialists, and registrars, and many have advanced degrees among them. And so we're very familiar with your experience and we are here to help you, not just with the technology, but with support when and as you need it. So when schools have a scenario they can't quite figure out, our team jumps in and we really do consider our clients part of our family. Uh, we host an annual user conference and we've all made really great friends that we look forward to seeing each year. Um, and this is a picture from one of our uh, summer conferences. This is our CEO, Carrie Cooper, and we're very proud to have a 50% women-led management team at College Source. Uh, and again, to show you that we are friends with our clients, here's me ignoring the camera completely and chatting away with one of our, with one of our clients. All right, so now we're gonna segue into the You Achieve Planner. And I'm gonna give you an overview, like I said, and then we'll go into a live demo. So, after working with degree audits for over 30 years, what we learned was that students and schools wanted more term by term guidance rather than just the um, linear presentation of a, an audit. So we created the academic planner to help chunk the audit up into digestible bits and create more personalized plans. So the um, students can plan directly from the audit. Here the audit is on the left and the plan is on the right. It's really easy to just drag and drop the courses over from the audit and into the term where they want to take a plan. And planned requirements check off with a purple box and the time uh, that color scheme is used throughout and across all of the UAchieve products. And so they check off when they're actually validated. And this is the real value of using the U Achieve suite, which is that the U Achieve plans are the only ones that validate against the U Achieve degree audit to actually ensure students are planning courses that actually apply and move them towards degree. So it's actually running an audit in the background to confirm where courses are applying and then providing warning indicators if they don't, as here where there's a prerequisite. And the U Achieve audit is super important because it is providing great accuracy in terms of what is actually being needed and collected and completed. It will be whatever is in the audit will actually be available to plan from when you're planning directly from the audit as in here. So for example, you can see any previously applied transfer work here. This student has taken a psychology course at a community college, transferred it in, and you can see exactly where it's applying in the audit. And so the student wouldn't um, plan for something else. So that's already accounted for. And it's checked off with this green check mark indicating that this requirement is complete. Planning from the audit also allows you to include plans for multiple majors or minors or concentrations if the student has declared these then they become part of the audit and they can also be planned from. So they can also have courses dragged and dropped into one 
um, consistent plan. If the student has gotten any exceptions or waivers, then these are also accommodated in the audit and can be planned for. So in this case, the student has been given permission to take IMS 1440, which was not originally um, on the list of applicable courses. An exception was made, and now the student is able to plan for that particular course going forward, and it is showing up as a planned course. The audit will also allow you to plan from conditional elements and show the uh, behavior that happens as a result. So in this case, we have a situation where this marketing 100 was planned and it was taken. It would have checked off. In fact, when it was planned, it checked off the mathematics and formal reasoning area requirement. However, because it requires a C or better grade and the student actually got a C minus, it is not checked off now. Um, because the audit recognizes that it was not completed. So the student will need to take another course and get a C or better grade or retake the course and get a C or better grade. The audit can also provide for tracking of milestones and non-course data. So we can see that here in the audit, a selection of various non-curricular non items that can be handled. In this case, they had a placeholder in the planner indicating that they were going to propose for their dissertation. They did that, so this is now checked off in a past term. And in a future term, there's a placeholder here where they're indicating, well, I'm gonna be doing some student teaching that's going to, when I, when I complete it, it will check off this requirement. So the audit just provides lots and lots of extra value that you can plan from. Other features that the, um, plan the planner allows you to do is it does include advisor approvals at either the term or the entire plan level. So the approvals can be given and the individual term or the whole plan can be then locked down and it won't allow changing unless the student uh, requires or requests an approval. You can also add additional terms that aren't that don't come with the, the standard that is built when the plan is created or delete terms if the student doesn't think they're gonna need all of those terms. It also allows for grade planning, which gives the student an idea of, okay, if I think this is what I'm gonna do in the courses, this is gonna be my GPA for the term. So again, allows them to do even, even more discrete planning there. They can also have multiple plans. So if they're thinking about maybe changing uh, programs, uh, they could do a what if plan. They can have multiple what if plans. And then once they're happy with a given term, they can click this one button and push their courses over into the schedule builder application, which allows them to select for specific sections of a course. <clears throat> so our section builder is where the student can actually then start planning the upcoming term. Uh, they can build a personalized schedule, they can do it manually, but the real beauty of the schedule builder is that there is an auto generate feature, which will create multiple thumbnails like we see here, based on the combinations and permutations of all the sections that are available for the courses that they've selected. It, it can consider preferences, there are a series of preferences that the student can answer to guide that auto generation. They can also block off times when they don't want to take courses. And then again, once they're happy with a particular schedule, they can send those courses back into your student information system for registration. They can also share their calendars with friends or have friends share with them. That's based on mutual permissions given back and forth. They can also choose to export it to a different calendar system. And all of the UAchieve applications are created with responsive design. And for the schedule builder, this goes down to the phone screen size so they can um, actually see their schedule on their phones. All right, so I mentioned there's also a communications forum that runs across all of the functions within you achieve and this allows uh, advisors if they have um, if you have uh, approvals as part of your workflow, they can see notifications on this screen. Um, they, there's also a comments area that allows advisors and students to communicate back and forth and have an ongoing conversation. So in this case, uh, I could 
as a student, I could answer back. I could keep it as a private note to myself, or I could share it out to my student and or to any other advisors that are affiliated with this particular student. And these conversations are kept for the history of the student's tenure with your institution. These comments and the notification, um, the approval notifications can also be pushed out into your existing email package at your school. So they don't have to log in to see them if you have that set up. UAchieve also includes a library of 18 reports that come along with UAchieve. Right here, I'm just showing you the ones that are affiliated with the planning system. So we have one report that uh, at the aggregate level will show you um, a selection of students and their progress in their plans. So this will show you some pie charts that show, again, at the aggregate, the coral color indicates those that are off plan. The, uh, the green indicates those that are on plan. Those were probably okay with, we might wanna check into those that are off plan. And then we can see the individual students and click down into each of them to see, well, why are they off plan? For this particular student, well, they didn't take any of the courses that they planned. So that might be an opportunity to reach out to that student and see if they need some help. Two other reports that we have inform your ability to do some analysis around um, planned course demand and scheduled course demand. So again, at an aggregate level, this is showing you the from, this is pulling information from the planner which is future terms and what students are actually putting in their declared plans and intending to take going out longer. So you can see at the department level what's being most requested and then down to the specific courses that are being most requested. And then to get more discreet or more close in time for the terms that are coming up to be registered for, this data is being pulled from the schedule builder. So now we're looking at the actual individual sections of courses that are being requested. So you can make sure you have enough planned for. All right, so now we're actually going to go in live into the application. So I'm going to switch screens and I'm going to move into, this is actually the UAchieve interface. It is accessible um, by the web, by, by any standard web browser. I am logged in now as a student. And um, so I am landing at the plans page here. I've already started a plan. So I'm gonna continue to work in that plan. But just quickly, I wanna point out, here is that comments section again. It is repeated on the plans page. So I could go in and continue the conversation from this page. And the nice thing um, too, from here, I can actually link a particular plan to a comment to give context around that comment if I wanted to. Now to go into my plan that I'm working on, I'm gonna open it up and you should see a screen soon that looks similar to what we saw in our slide deck earlier. So here we have our audit on the left and on the right, these are our terms. And I said I'd started this. So I have one course that I've already planned for fall 2022. And um, if I scroll down also, I can see again here, I've already got some green check marks. Now this student is brand new at my institution, hasn't taken any courses with me, but they do have some previous work that's being brought in. There's a test, an AP test score that is applying. Um, here's that uh, transfer course that we saw earlier. Um, they've got some military credit. So all, these things are already checking off so the student um, doesn't make a mistake and, and redundantly plan something that they don't need. This is the course that is being planned already. Now, if I look at my completed courses, this little icon up here, then it's gonna move my plan to the left and it's gonna show me all of that work that this student has already brought in. As uh, the student continues going through, term by term, this will lengthen and it will show all the completed courses. It will also show whether they were planned or whether they were planned and not taken. So this will just continue to grow with all the courses as the student goes through their career. Now, if I go back to the plan, I can continue 
to build this out. So I'm gonna go down to my business core and I'm gonna open this up and take this accounting 221. So I can just grab it, pull it over and drop it into my term. If it turns green, that good, that's good. That means I'm planning appropriately in terms of prereqs and co-recs, in terms of availability when the course is actually available. So, so far so good. Now I'm gonna continue planning. If I wanna go back up and uh, add be an English course, I've got a choice between composition and literature. Um, I really like to read, so I'm gonna take a literature course, drop that down, oh, but it's turning red. So now if I hover over this, it's gonna tell me what's going on. <clears throat> and it turns out there is a prerequisite for this course. And I've, I haven't taken English 111, nor have I planned for it as a prereq. So I have to take that first. So I'm gonna go over, and grab English 111 instead, drop that down, turns green, that's good. And I'm just gonna move 112 down to a later term. Now they're both green because I've planned them appropriately. And now I wanna check to make sure that I am actually planning appropriately. So if I use this check button, it's gonna run an audit in the background. And then it's gonna show me again on the left in my audit, the requirements that are being checked off as a result of my planning. So now I can see, I see a lot more purple now. That means my plan, my requirements are being checked off and that I'm planning appropriately. So now I'm going to plan one more course. I'm gonna go down, maybe try to knock out some more of my gen eds. Maybe I wanna do this CP124, drop that in there. Oh, it's red too. So if I hover over, this course isn't offered in this term. So again, another warning indicator that um, something isn't available. Now I can avoid that type of um, warning by, let's say maybe I'm gonna look at a different course, look at this marketing 291 course. And so if I click on it, if I click on any of the courses, it's gonna bring up this information about the course. Now this is pulling from your course catalog or your student information system where you, wherever you store this information with some data about the course. If there are any prereqs or co-recs, there, there are some other fields that you can provide more information. And then there's this course availability matrix which shows me when my course is available. And I can see that this one is available for fall 2022. And that drop down allows me to pick a different term, but that's the term I want to add it to. So I can just add it directly from here and I don't have to drag it or drop it over there. All right, so um, I mentioned earlier that you can also add terms. Maybe I've decided that I want to take a summer term. So I can add a term using this plus button. And however many terms you have at your institution would you can populate out in this drop down. You have multiple, if you have more than three, I only have three. I'm gonna add a summer term for 2022 and it's going to put it in order here. So here's my, my summer 2022 term and I can just start planning like I would. I can drag and drop courses over, but let's say I wanna plan for a milestone requirement or a non-curricular credential. I can do that and add a placeholder in here by using this add message button. So this is gonna bring up a list of pre-formatted um, milestones or messages or um, non-course credentials that you want to provide to your students or advisors uh, to allow them to add in as placeholders. You can add as many of these as you need to populate this out. So in this case, maybe I'm going to pursue a certification. I'm gonna add that. And you can have more than one of those too. So also a way that maybe an advisor who can access this plan might also wanna go in and give a message to the student. Maybe they wanna suggest that they um, complete their language requirements during the summer term as well. So they can add that as a message in there. <clears throat> now, I said earlier too, that you can also have multiple plans. So if the student wanted to um, set up a what if, maybe they're thinking about changing majors, you can just go back to the plans page. And this also shows you um, how easy it is to set up a new plan from scratch. So we're gonna create a new plan. We're gonna go in and we're going to pick a program. Maybe they're thinking about environmental studies. 
and they're going to give it a name. Now this is um, kind of one of those smart text boxes, so I can actually enter um, text, but if it's something that I type often, it will make suggestions and I can pick one of those. I tell it what term and year I'm gonna, I want to start and the number of years to graduation, which will inform the number of terms based on the standard number of terms that you have at your institution. They can also change it. Maybe they think that since they're um, starting, you know, maybe a year out, if they do switch majors after a year, maybe it'll only take them three years to finish. So it's gonna think about this for a minute. And now again, here's my audit on the left. And here is my, um, my plan on the right. In this case, I only have six terms because I chose three years instead of four years. Now, we've been showing you planning from the audit, but there is another way that you can actually use Planner. Um, you can create roadmaps. These are guides that are created by your departments of suggested courses to take in specific terms. So <clears throat> these also are a way to further chunk up the audit into more chunks and give even a more directed pathway to your students. So in this case, I see here, I've got two links. So I've got two roadmaps that have been created for this particular uh, program. So if I want to use a roadmap, I can click on that. And so again, you can see what this is doing is it's, it's telling the student in a term by term, year by year, term by term, suggestions of what to take and when. Now I can plan just like I did with dragging and dropping. Um, there are also indicators. Uh, one of the nice things about um, roadmaps are that there are indicators that you can add into a roadmap to, to note whether um, there are critical uh, courses that students should take. From this legend down here, there are more kinds of icons that you can add to the roadmaps. You can indicate whether a course is required for a particular degree, whether it's a preferred course, a preferred suggested course, and then the critical indicator that we saw. Now, what's nice about using those indicators is that if you do that, then instead of having the student drag every single course over to every term, they can use one of these two buttons. There's a move all courses, which moves everything from the plan, uh, from the uh, uh, roadmap, excuse me, over onto the plan. Or there's this move preferred, which will just move over those courses that are marked with those critical or required statuses into the terms where they're suggested. So that makes the planning go a little bit more quickly. Now, <clears throat> roadmaps are, are very helpful, as you can see. The downside is they are static. So the beauty of building from an audit is that if anything changes in the program or if the student gets an exception, as we saw earlier, um, then that's immediately shown in the audit. Whereas the roadmaps would need to be maintained and updated and they don't take things like exceptions into account or things like um, if you have a, agreements and conditional kinds of things built into your audit. For example, if a student has an associate's degree from a community college and maybe they get all their gen eds waived, then um, in the audit, it will automatically show that wave so that the student doesn't have to plan for it. So we have both options, which is really nice to plan from the audit or to plan from the roadmap or to be able to toggle back and forth. Now, I'm gonna go back to my plans page. I'm gonna go ahead and keep the second plan as a, as a backup option, but the student is gonna continue um, working from the declared plan. And only one of the plans can be declared, and that would be the dark star that's indicated under the, this um, column here. Now you can call this anything you like. It doesn't have to be declared. You could call it preferred. But what it means is that this is the plan that the student is saying, this is the one I'm actually following and taking courses from. So if we click back into this, I'll show you a couple more functions and we'll move into that schedule builder. So uh, another thing that you can do from within the plan is you can see a PDF of the entire plan. So a student could look at everything planned out in one page. And then um, using the PDF uh, functions, you can, um, you can save it, you can print it, you can share it, email it, et cetera. 
you, the student can also plan grades. And I mentioned that again earlier. To do that, we can just go in and edit the plan. I'm gonna go ahead and delete that um, course that isn't available. So we're gonna take that out of the term. And this is where I can plan for grades if I wanna do that. The PL is just the default grade that I'm using in my uh, demo environment to indicate that it's a planned course, but that would be, that could be set to whatever, if you use a grade to indicate it's a planned course, it could be set to yours. Or you can provide students the ability to select grades to see, to give them this plan GPA and give them some idea of, okay, let's see, if I think this is what I can achieve, then this is gonna be my GPA for the term. So then I could just submit it to save, and then there's my planned grades. It also includes a GPA calculator that allows students to set a graduation goal GPA so they can see as they're going what they need to achieve in a particular term to reach their goal. We're gonna skip that for now. And then I could also, let's say, you know what, I, I, don't, I don't like these courses, I wanna start over. Then I could use this minus button and have all the courses removed from my plan and start over again. I mentioned approvals. And if you do have approvals as part of your workflow, this is where the student could request this little up arrow to request full plan approval or just request an individual term to be approved. And then once approval is given, this term would be locked down and the student wouldn't be able to change anything again unless they requested unapproval. All right, but now we are happy with this plan and we are going to push the courses into our schedule builder to be able to pick specific sections of it. So I can do that just using this um, little calendar icon here. Clicking on that, yes, confirm that. And now we're gonna be moving into Schedule Builder, but it looks completely seamless here. So I've got a message here that those courses were successfully added to my cart, that's excellent. Um, so I could go ahead and I could start planning manually, going into section by section, and I could start pulling courses, adding courses onto my calendar here and building them manually based on the individual information. If I look at this, I can see I'm getting some information again pulled from your, your system. Uh, maybe there are some that aren't, they don't have the days and times scheduled yet. So there could be some messaging. If there are any time conflicts to anything I've already planned out there, that would be indicated in this status as well. I am seeing the seats that are filled, which courses have availability and which don't. If I have any, if I've indicated I have friends um, that are allowed to see my schedule and I can see theirs, then it would indicate if I have any friends in any of these sections. But as I mentioned, um, what I really love about the schedule builder is the avail avail the ability to auto generate schedules and see those thumbnails. Now, to inform that auto generation, there's a couple things that I can build in in terms of preferences. One is busy times. So let's say I have a job in the, in the um, dining hall. And so I want to make sure that that is blocked off. And maybe I work, uh, let's see, noon to two on Mondays and Thursdays. I'm gonna save that. And then it's gonna put a gray box and it's gonna block off that time when I go into auto generation. And so my courses, the other sections will have to work around that. I can have as many busy times as I want. Maybe I have a study group in the evening that I wanna make sure to accommodate or something else. But we're just gonna leave it at the one for now. And now we're gonna look at scheduling. So I'm gonna click this auto generate. And now, I can go through and set up some preferences that I want to guide that auto generation. The preferences include, maybe there's some times that you wanna set up. Maybe you want more or less time between courses. Maybe you need to um, pad some time in there because you're moving from one campus to another campus. Or maybe you wanna have them tighter within uh, fewer days and more classes or spread out more over the week. 
Students can also indicate in addition to busy times, they can indicate blocks of time where they do wanna take courses. Other preferences might include the number of courses that they've specified, if they've added extra courses, um, such that maybe they have some ORD uh, relationships. Maybe they don't want both, but you know they want one, but if they don't get into that, they'll take the other. Uh, maybe some courses have to be taken together. <clears throat> and then there's a sliding scale of kind of their preferences around, do they want this? And well, I'd really rather have this one, et cetera. The next array of preferences are professors. So they could indicate again, similar things. Maybe there's a professor that they really like and if they have the opportunity, they'd like to take that professor again. And then you can also set up preferences around if there's a particular campus a student really wants to take courses from or uh, with virtual opportunities, would they rather take virtual courses? Would they rather be in person, et cetera? Now, all of these preferences are configurable by you, meaning you can have them all available to your students, or you can um, have just the ones that you want the student to be able to select. Or you can turn them all off. Um, they can also skip that step. There was a skip preferences too, if they wanna just go straight to generating schedules. Then they can select the number of thumbnails that they wanna get back. Uh, it's up to 100 as a max. You can also define if you don't want them to look at 100 every time, you can shorten that number. We're gonna leave it at five. We're gonna go ahead and generate the schedules. Now it's bringing me back a series of thumbnails of the um, courses that I've selected, but the section with the sections available. And you can see it's working around those gray boxes, which are my busy times. So I can go in and look at the details of any one of these, and maybe there's one that I particularly like where it is. I can lock that into place. I'm gonna lock that CLS course into place there. And then I'm gonna auto-generate again. And it'll keep that one course in the same place and it'll move the rest of the courses around. Um, so then I can pick the one course or the one schedule that I like. Maybe, maybe it's this one. I'm gonna go ahead and save this one. I'm going to give it the name and I'm going to make it my primary and save. And now I'm finished. And I'm going to look at my fall schedule. And then again, if I've decided, yes, this is the schedule that I want for this term, then I can just click on this button and it will push those courses back into your student information system to make them available for registration. So now, um, that's my live demo. I'm gonna go back over into my PowerPoint for a little bit. And I've got just a few notes on U Achieve Cloud, the hosted version of our planner and audit software. So by hosted, what do I mean? It means that College Source hosts this. We do use Amazon Web Services to present it, um, but College Source is responsible then for implementing the system and maintaining it. As part of a subscription, you get technical and functional support included, as well as 40 hours of consulting per year, which could be either technical or functional um, consulting, helping you setting up scenarios, et cetera. And then it also includes regular upgrades. Now, Having you achieve in the cloud also allows us to extend our what if audit functionality even further. Currently, we have a number of ways that you can run what if audits for students, but with um, YouTube Cloud, we also include a service that allows us to run audits for all of your students against all of your degree programs. And this is a great way to discover hidden awards for students who've already maybe met all the requirements towards a particular um, program, or it, they could be set up to identify those that are a certain percentage of requirements along the way, or a certain number of hours along the way, based on your specifications. Now, I do have a case study here. We did this for um, Saddleback College in 2019, where we ran um, 13,000 students against um, almost 600 degrees and certificates, and they discovered almost 6,000 additional degrees and certificates that they could um, actually go ahead and award. So this is a pretty exciting service that we are happy to provide for you. 
So now we've got to the point where I said, I'll give you a little sneak peek um, of the next version of what our planner will look like. And I believe Ed would like to um, step in for a moment and say some opening words before I show you what I've got. Yeah, just to let everybody know, when you when you, you see there, Planner 5.0, that's the next major release of our software. That is in development right now. We're, we're doing some initial testing, working with some of our clients to see how it behaves with some of the actual data within their uh, systems. And this is something that will be, be released later this year. There's no specific release date right now. As I say, our product development team is still working with actual data from schools to see how that behaves with some of the uh, improvements that we're introducing into the software, but it will have a new look and feel, new user interface, and there will be some uh, much more improved planning capabilities that go into that. There's also some integration between our transfer evaluation system and our degree audit system for those of you who may use our test product. All right, thank you, Ed. So now you've seen what our current planner can do, and we've had a little, we have a preview now of what we'll be changing in the next version. We've been reworking it to making it, to make it significantly easier to use, easier to understand, easier to implement, and to help you increase adoption. So I've got a few screenshots of what we anticipate it will look like, but just understand that we are going to be moving into beta development, so things could change along the way. Um, so, but this is what we've got. So. What it's going to include in terms of enhancements is that term-by-term -term plans will be auto-created based on the program of study that the student actually selects. So instead of the student having to drag or the advisor having to drag and drop courses over like I've been showing you, um, there will actually be suggested courses already built into a plan once the student initiates it. And it does that using an algorithm that is going to place required courses, those that are either identified as required within the, um, the degree programs, or if it's, an only, if it's the only option in a requirement. So for example, if a student has to take two courses and there are only two courses that are acceptable, um, then those would be placed. And it's also considering appropriate course order. So 100 level courses before higher level, prereqs and co-reqs, as well as um, taking into consideration the course availability where it's known. It will also be able to add um, notes for guidance, as uh, free form notes for guidance. And um, it can be edited by students or advisors. So the, um, the plan is suggested, but then if the student doesn't want to take a particular course at a particular time, they have the ability to edit it and move things around. We are going to be keeping the approval process that we already include in our current planner. And then um, it will automatically adjust going forward based on a number of things that could happen. So for example, if the student changes their major and it's a declared major, then when they go in and they um, initiate a plan, it's going to reflect that, okay, this is a new major. So it's going to be creating the plan based on the new major. Um, if they fail a prereq or a co-rec, it's going to adjust for that fact. Um, if they don't take a planned course that is required for their program, then it's going to push it into a future term because they still have to take it. Uh, it will be able to reflect, again, exceptions and waivers like we saw before. It will also be able to accommodate any transfer work. Um, and if there are any changes with in terms of catalog changes, they will also be reflected in the planning process. All right, so what does it look like? So the, um, the student or an advisor can initiate a plan for a student. So all they're going to do is they're going to go in, they're going to give it a, plan, a name, they're going to select the uh, term and year where it starts, like we saw before, and then they can identify how long the plan is going to take or how long it's going to take them to graduate based on identifying a specific graduation term, identifying the number of hours per term they want to take, 
or the number of courses per term. So that will help you achieve, calculate how many terms are gonna be required based on the input that they uh, say. At this point, they can include additional terms, but they can always add in terms later as well. So then you're gonna save it, and then you achieve is going to use its algorithm and create the term-by-term -term plan for the student. So what we can see here is we have situations where there were required courses. So those are placed in the plan, in the term, based on the algorithm that's suggested. And then where a student still has a choice, so for example, they need to pick a calculus course, but they've got courses that they can choose from, then they're going to be prompted and given the chance to select a particular course. And then they need to either select the course or they need to confirm that yes, they wanna take that required course in that term. Once they do that, the next step is they can make changes to it. So this is where maybe they decide, you know, maybe I don't want this particular course in this particular term, but I wanna move it to a future term. I, there will be a drop down here that will give them choices of what they want to do. And one of them could presumably be move this to a different term. They can also either add a course that wasn't already planned here, or they can add a free form text note. The student can do it, or an advisor can add a free form text note. When they click on this, they've got um, some categories that would be pre-formatted, again, based on you and what you want in there to guide um, the context of it. But then here's that free form text box. So once they add the note, maybe the advisor wanted to put this in, reminding the student that they need to see your better term, uh, see your better grade for this to count towards this program, um, then they could do that. And then going forward now, this is that adjustment phase. So the term has turned, fall 2021 has passed, and what it's showing me now is in this past term, those courses that were planned, but not this one, it wasn't earned because they took it, but they failed it. This one was planned, but they didn't take it. And then those that there was one that wasn't planned, but they earned it. And then these that were planned and earned. And then this is the next term to come. So what has been adjusted here? So they took and failed that physics course. So the next term has pushed it down because it is required. The student has to pass this in order to um, graduate with this degree. So it's put back on the plan. In this case, they didn't take the writing course that they planned for, but they took a different writing course instead that satisfied the same requirement, so they're okay. And so no adjustment was needed in this case. All right, so that is what I wanted to tell you and show you today. So I am going to now uh, share my video. Oh, I guess I'm not. Um, I was gonna share my face again. Oh, maybe I'm coming back. And uh, if you have any questions for us, I, it looks like there's one in the Q&A panel. Oh, but it looks like somebody answered it. So if anybody has any additional questions that you want to ask, Ed and I are here. Chris, you haven't seen it. We've answered eight questions in the Q&A so far. And, um... We certainly are open to sticking around here. If anybody else has further questions, we can either do that or answer them live. Mike, did you want to have us read those or will they be captioned? Yeah, yeah, Ed, uh, so just for the recording purposes, since uh, people watching after the fact won't see these written answers, um, might go through a few of them. Um, and thank you for going through and answering all these, by the way. Uh, okay. First is, um, I guess there were two questions related to um, an API for, uh, you know, comments between uh, the UHU system and other systems like Lucian or EAB. So yeah, I, and, oh, go ahead. For, for something like that, there's not an API that directly um, shares data between the other systems. If you wanted to bring it in, the response I gave indicated that if you want to bring it in like on a one-time basis, and we've had a couple of schools say this, we capture a lot of information during the admissions process. We want that to be available to advisors 
when they are then looking at the student's degree audit or degree plan later. We can take that and bring all that information and have it accessible within the audit, but there's not an API for sharing information back and forth between external systems. Great, thanks, Ed. Mm -hmm. um, and another kind of technical question uh, moving down is once this program is established for a specific campus, um, who would the registrar's office or any other stakeholder contact for uh, tech questions? Well, for, for tech questions, there really won't be that many because we're completely responsible for the installation. We're responsible for the underlying server platform, meaning the virtual servers, operating system, Java, serverless containers, anything involved with that. We're responsible for all the U Achieve application components and interfaces. The U Achieve, <coughs> excuse me, the U, <clears throat> excuse me. The no, U no worries. The UAG database and anything in terms of disaster recovery and data backup. Perfect. And then uh, we have a new question in from Sam. How have schools used the planning tool when their class schedules aren't built out for more than a year or so? So kind of a shorter term uh, schedule. That's a problem that a lot of schools grapple with because we, as a matter of fact, we did a demo for someone um, but last week and they said exactly that. We don't have our courses planned out more than a year into the future. I, to me, it's more of a philosophical question because you can't, you can use the planner to look into the future, right? But if you're looking at, if you're thinking about it from an, an analytics perspective, we wanna look at course demand data two years from now. If you don't have something to incent the students to use the planner, that if they don't build plans that far out, you may not have access to that data. Now that may be where, as you determine what the appropriate level of interaction is at your institution between advisors and students, do you wanna have advisors go out there and start working with them to say, hey, let's schedule a session. I wanna build out your plan two years into the future to try to get that data there for aggregate purposes. And in addition to that, um... Even though, even if it's not available out, you know, two, three years, the student can still plan the course. It'll just show up with that red circle, but they can put it in there. And once it does become available, it will turn green when, it, when the availability is recognized from your system. All right, thanks. Um, and can we add this inside the planning? tool, um, as in, for example, grades not considered final until they're earned or the institution reserves the right to cancel classes or otherwise change the schedule as needed? Yeah, there's places within our software where you can add information, i.e. messages. It depends on the extent of what you want to do and what you're trying to accomplish. When I read that question, like to say that, you know, we reserve the right to cancel a class that we may have scheduled, that seems like it's more of a registration function than it is a planning function because you wouldn't actually get there until you're actually starting to look at a term by term um, schedule and look at the specific course sections that are being offered. I, we would look at that as we evaluate the scope of the implementation. We would talk with you and say, what is the extent of messages that you want to put in? I mean, example, if you wanted to incorporate five paragraphs, I know that's extreme, but if you wanted to incorporate five paragraphs worth of a message somewhere within a plan, that would probably be difficult. But what, you, what we can do and what we have done with a lot of schools is they may have that language where that can be fluid and they may create a place where they retain that language and we simply provide a link to where that language is. That way, if the language is appropriate for this semester but may change slightly in the next semester, they can just simply go in and edit wherever they store that message and the link within our software continually points to where that message is. That's something that, that we have done to address people wanting to communicate information within an audit or within a plan. Great. Uh, moving down uh, the list. Um, and by the way, for anybody attending live here, uh, you can also kind of review these if you click on the Q&A panel and go to the answered column, you should be able to see some of these written answers. Um, but uh, moving on, do these seats filled count, uh, counts reflect number of people who plan to take the section or the actual enrollment within the SIS? That data comes from your registration system. So it's looking at enrollment. It, it actually is, it maintains that uh, integration in real time. So 
as you start to, you know, if you're anxiously awaiting your open registration, you're thinking, hey, I got to get that econ class Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at one o'clock. I really don't have a Monday morning class. You'll be able to continually go into your schedule and see how many seats have been filled as you get closer to your open registration window. Great. And uh, another kind of technical question related to the Planner 5.0. Um, could the Planner 5.0 5, uh, 5 be run in batch as opposed to be initiated by the student or advisor? And, and by batch, if that means, can we just go in and say, let's pre-populate a plan for all of our incoming freshmen? Something like that is not inherent in the code base today, but that is something that our services team is saying that we can make that type of a modification to allow for it. There's gonna to have to be some mechanism for what you want to see in that. And I'm using that example because somebody specifically brought that up with us uh, a couple of weeks back in a demo. You know, can we, for first year students, we really wanna direct what they take. After that, you know, they have a lot of freedom because now they're settled in on our campus and they have an advisor relationship at that first year. And in that scenario, our, our premise would be, if you can define what courses you want to pre-populate, in that first year, that's where our, our services team is saying we can do something in that batch population fashion. And also, I understand as part of the development going forward, it is on the roadmap to look at that for a future version as part of the um, standard code. Great. And um, the, Hannah had sort of a follow up there. Maybe that'll be uh, also kind of included, but uh, having any plans for batch functions around printing transcripts or student schedules, room schedules, and so on? I, when you talk about printing transcripts, that's not functionality that's really inherent in our software at all. So doing that in batch, I, I wouldn't see how, maybe I'm not understanding the question. Yeah, we, I may be misinterpreting it, so I apologize there. No, you may not. It's, it, sometimes it's just hard to get, get across what we're saying. Let me offer yeah. this. We, we treat your student information system as your system of record for all your academic history. Now, you will look at our degree audit software and it, as you're confident in the system, you can look at that for graduation clearance, but printing out a transcript is gonna be typically going back to your student system and retrieving all your academic history, your home coursework, your transfer coursework, however you, whatever you want to reflect in the transcript, is usually derived from what's in the student information system. That's why, I, as I'm interpreting the question, I, I don't see how we would batch print transcripts from the degree audit tool. Oh, great, thanks, Ed. Uh, and I think this will probably be our last question. We'll go to the um, last unanswered one here from Sam. Uh, second part of my question is, if students pre-register via the scheduler, but a certain section runs out of seats, does their pre-registration request stay in the planner or schedule so that institutions can plan to add seats to high demand courses? It can stay in the registration system. When Chris, in her demo, when she showed you that, here's the pre-enroll or pre-registration button for that. What that effectively does in the background is it takes the student's primary schedule data and moves it to a course cart, whatever you wanna call it, the database tables in Banner, PeopleSoft, Colleague, whatever it may be. It moves that schedule data there. So it's sitting there almost as if any of us went out to Amazon and said, I'm gonna go look at, I wanna buy a book and a sweater and some shoes. When I go to check out, those three things are sitting in my cart for me to check out. That's what happens with the registration. Our schedule data gets pushed to the cart in the registration system. So if those seats fill, I mean, you may be querying against that course cart data that's maintained in your student system, or excuse me, in your registration system. You know, you may actively monitor that to help you decide what you want to do with scheduling, but it's it's not going to guarantee the student a seat in it. It's simply moving it over to the cart. And then it's dependent on when is their open registration period becoming available. Does that make sense, Mike, to you? Yeah, no, it's, um, it's, it's good functionality. I think that does make sense. Okay. Um, so yeah, I, we've reached the top of the hour here. Just wanna be sensitive to time. So we are going to wrap up here, but again, you can refer to the recording of this uh, in about 30 minutes using the same link and then um, We'll be providing the video recording to College Source uh, 
and referring to that after after uh, we receive more guidance there. So you can watch the recording at any time. I also want to mention that our annual meeting is coming up uh, April 3rd through 6th in Portland, Oregon, our first uh, in-person annual meeting since 2019. Uh, hopefully we get to see you there. I know that uh, Chris Starkey will be present, uh, so you can get some more uh, information about you achieve there if you need, or any of the other products that College Source has. Uh, I don't know if you'll be there or not, Ed. No, I tend to be the guy that we uh, end up going to Educause. I talk with the tech folks more so than I do the, the registrar's office. Well, fair enough. I'm sure in the other case, we'll be able to get your answer, our questions answered, and uh, you can refer to Chris and Ed. Uh, I think your contact info was on the slide deck there, and that's something else if you need to, we'll, we'll put information on the webinar site uh, if you need to get in touch with College schedule, uh, Source rather about uh, any of the other products. So with that, uh, we'll wrap it up. Uh, thanks to you, Chris and Ed, for presenting today and showing off this uh, excellent product. Thank you. Thanks very much. Yep, appreciate it, Mike. And thank you all for, uh, for sitting in and listening and uh, actually caring about our products enough to spend some time with us. Y'all take care and have a good week. Hope to see you soon. Bye, Bye everybody. Yeah.